Hi everyone, so we're going to continue on our description of the periodic table and um, another thing that's important in, in looking at the periodic table aside from knowing you know metals, non-metals and, and uh, what's group and what's period is to kind of a, uh, have an idea of what the um, state of matter is for each of these uh, elements when they're discovered and so if you look here uh, one of the things to uh, learn from from the periodic table is just that state of matter. So in this particular case, we are actually told, uh, given in this uh, information right here, that all of um, these elements exist as monoatomic uh, uh, elements. So in other words, sodium is just sodium, just Na, right? So sodium metal, for example, is just Na. The formula of sodium metal is just Na. Uh, sodium, uh, magnesium metal, just Mg. Okay. On the other hand, um, things like uh, these elements right here, which are uh, 7a, group 7a, and they're often called the halogens. Um, they exist as, as you can see here, diatomic molecules. So the one that's colored in this yellow color right here. So all of these guys exist as diatomic molecules. So for example, F, which uh, in nature exists as a gas is uh, F2 is the formula, not just F. Uh, same thing with N, nitrogen exists as a gas, and nitrogen gas has the formula of N2. That's just how they're discovered in nature. So in other words, we never discovered just N alone, but we always discovered N as N2. Okay, so that's something you need to keep in mind as far as, you know, uh, it really memorize because these are just kind of facts at this point, and we have to uh, just have that ability to be able to um, discuss things in, in chemistry and so you have to know how some of these things look like. Um, there are elements that exist as polyatomic molecules uh, when they're found. So for example, things like phosphorus doesn't exist as just P, but it exists as P4. Okay, uh, And then sulfur doesn't exist as S, but uh, it exists as S8. Okay, So that's you know, those are some examples of, of things that uh, they're not just one atom, but they exist as the combination of atoms, okay? I mentioned earlier this the name of the 7A, group 7A is called halogen. Uh, that's actually provided in that periodic table I used in the previous video. So certain groups are given special names just because people have uh, worked with them or they have special properties. Um, and so the group 7a is called the halogens you see that all the ones with the red triangles are the halogens and then all the ones with blue triangles are called noble gases that's group 8a or group 18 and then group 1a it's called the alkali metals you can see it in this legend as well that's the purple triangles except for hydrogen and then the one with the green triangle is group 2 or group 2a they're called the alkaline earth metals and of course these guys are called lanthanides and actinide. Another piece of information that's useful that you can get out of the periodic table is the physical state. So as you can see here, most um, substances, most elements uh, are actually found in the solid state. So those are all that uh, all the, the ones that are colored in blue. The ones that are colored in this you know, light blue or cyan color exists as liquid at uh, 25 degrees Celsius and pressure equals one atmosphere. So in this case only two elements exist as liquids Hg which is mercury and Br2. Remember that these guys are diatomics, right? So Br2 is actually a liquid, okay? And then all the red ones are gases so you notice that there's all of these guys are gases and now you know why that one is called a noble gas because all of them exist as gases so helium, neon, argon and so on. These guys are also gases but remember they're diatomic so it's N2, O2, F2 and Cl2 are all gases and H2 is also a gas. So I want to uh, uh, move on from the periodic table to just kind of the different ways that you see these uh, either elements or uh, ionic compounds or covalent molecules represented in your textbook and also in questions uh, you'll see them often. So there's four different ways that you'll see uh, molecules or uh, ionic compounds represented and these are shown here. 
So a lot of times you'll see them written as just the formula itself. This is often called the molecular formula, and we'll talk about later the difference between molecular versus empirical formula in the next topic. But a lot of times when we refer to molecular formula, that's basically just written as this, which is how many carbons you have and how many hydrogens you have. In this case, the numbers are listed as subscripts. So this particular formula, CH4, which remember, um, uh, this is an organic compound which we'll talk about later in the nomenclature part. This is called methane, has one carbon and four hydrogen. You might see this written this way. This illustrates the actual bonding between carbon and hydrogen. The bonds is represented as lines. Um, and so there are four bonds here. These are covalent bonds because both carbon and hydrogen are nonmetals. Uh, you might see uh, a more three-dimensional um, representation of the same molecule, the same methane molecule. So you might see that one way to represent them is to use this uh, so-called ball and stick model. The ball represent the atoms and different atoms have different colors as shown right here. And then the stick represent uh, the chemical bonds that connect one atom to the other one. Now you might also see, see this which is called a space filling model because in reality um, uh, molecules of course don't have the sticks connecting one atom to the other. The, the two atoms are just joined together and part of their electron uh, cloud uh, penetrate each other and form a chemical bond. So this is actually a more appropriate more realistic model of what the methane molecule looks like but this makes it easy to see the bond between the uh, two atoms. So that's why this model is still often used to represent the methane molecule. So here's uh, a series of uh, formulas as you can see and how they're represented in the four different representations to just talk about. The compound benzene for example, the molecular formula C6H6, you can see that the structural formula which is the one showing the bonds as lines are shown here so it has six carbons and six hydrogens represented this way when you build that model with the ball, ball and stick model you notice that it looks like this and then with the space filling model it looks like this let's look at this molecule here glucose uh, blood sugar um, C6H12O6 the structural formula looks very complicated and there's actually two forms of this the other form is what we call this uh, the cyclic form of glucose but this is the linear form which is just kind of the extended form of this if you build the ball and stick model it looks like this you notice that there are different color balls here because the red one represents oxygen uh, black represents carbon and white represents hydrogen and then this is the space filling model okay so uh, I'm going to end the video pretty soon from here, but I just want to give you an introduction to the next two videos, which is going to talk about nomenclature or naming systems, which are basically rules and, um, you know, ways of naming uh, two types of compounds, simple inorganic compounds and simple organic compounds. As far as what is the difference between inorganic and organic compounds, that's going to be discussed in one of the videos, which is the videos on the organic uh, compounds. but uh, the inorganic compounds are the type of naming that you probably have um, studied or learned in the previous chemistry course, in your pre-general chemistry course. So those are things like um, shown by this flow chart, which is how do you name ionic compounds, you know, how do you name the metal, how do you name the nonmetal, uh, and is the metal has only one charge or two charges, and so on. And then you also have the ways of naming uh, molecular compounds which are covalent compounds and how you name that based on the prefixes of the first and second element and then the, there's also going to be some description on how to name acids uh, binary acids and oxy acids or oxo acids okay um, so then part of it is you have to memorize uh, because this is really the part of chemistry that involves quite a bit of memorization because you just have to know the names of these compounds that allows you to be able to talk chemistry to be able to say things in the right way and in, in the that uh, other chemists would understand so uh, in the two, two videos that are coming up you'll be taught those um, description and remember what I mentioned before when I talk about ions that there are certain lists of polyatomic ions and other things that you need to memorize and this list is provided by the inorganic nomenclature lab manual so this is probably a good time for you to go to that lab page 
for inorganic nomenclature and start looking through those lab manuals and then as you're watching the next two videos kind of work with that lab manual and see you know that the components that are the same and think about how you're going to implement the the nomenclature rules in um, ex, you know various examples okay